CYA Division II sectional final. Someone's punching their ticket to the rash. It is the Menominee Mustangs of the Big Rivers Conference taking on Lake, the Lakeland Thunderbirds champions of the Great Northern. I'm Steve Akinick, Sports on Focus, alongside Matt Wenzel to take you through this one. Good so this early is, afternoon, Matt. This is gonna be an exciting one. Yeah, for early afternoon game. And of course, this is the first of our doubleheader for playoff action tonight. So I'm looking forward to it. We just got off doing Medford uh, Menominee boys last night, and we uh, continue for three games in two days. Absolutely. Menominee comes in here today. Packed house, there aren't many seats left. There are a few if you're in listening range and want to come down here. There's a few spots left in the gym, but not many. But we're going to take a look at each team. We will start with the Menominee Mustangs. They come in 19 and 8. They were 8 and 6 in the Big Rivers. They finished third behind Oakland Memorial and Hudson. You know, two teams that get high seeds in D1. Um, but yeah, they come in their playoff run. They were the one seed. So they beat Hayward last Friday, 56-31. One at home, 70-55 against La Crosse Central. And then a 56-31 win in Eau Claire against Toma. So they've been pretty breezing. They've been breezing through their playoff schedule so far. So far, you look at their losses. You got Eau Claire Memorial, New Richmond, Hudson, Eau Claire Memorial, Hudson, Eau Claire North, and then they went to the Beaver Dam Classic, lost two to Wapan and Beaver Dam, two of the best teams in the and that, state. And that's a resume right there. Yep. I mean, what, win or lose, you lose against those good quality opponents, it pays off in the playoffs, and Steven, it's showing right now. Absolutely, you look at some of the other games that they did win, 67-44 over Rice Lake. Uh, the one that stands out to me, 50-44 over Onalaska, early in the year when Onalaska was a little more healthy. They got a 66-33 win over River Falls, 79-40 over Chippewa Falls, 61-52 over a very good Prescott team that won the uh, middle border. So a good resume there for Menominee. Take a look, some stat leaders. Mary Berg leading the way, 11.3. Got Anna Wheeler, 10. Brooklyn Burt, 9.2. So really balanced scoring as well from the Mustangs. So basically that goes to show you might not have a girl that goes up with 20, maybe or 25 a game, but you might see three or four Mustang girl players that might come on, you know, you can see four or five of those girls in double figures. Yeah, I mean, even after that, you got Sammy Jacobs at 7.3, Sophia Schoenberger, seven, Ashley Willing, six. I mean, there's scoring from all over the place. So flip the book over, we'll talk about the team that we saw once already this year, the Lakeland Thunderbirds. We said champions of the Great Northern Conference. They swept the conference this year. 21 and six, 12 and 0 in the Great Northern Conference. And you look, it was a season of streaks for them. Started out the year 0 and three with losses to Marshfield, Kewaskum and Prairie du Chien. Then they went on a run, won seven in a row. Then lost two in a row, and again, we talked about teams. They lost to Aquinas, and they lost to Wapan. And then some wins, a loss to Wausau West, always a tough team out of the Wisconsin Valley. And then they are on a nine game winning streak. And that includes, as we go through the list, as a two seed, Wausau East at home, 89-38. Merrill at home, 66-25. And then the end of the big story, the upset, Beating New London 77-46 on Thursday up in Anago. Avenging an early season, uh, never mind, excuse me, I got them confused with somebody else. But beating, oh, beating a top team that was really favored to make a deep playoff run and beat them in a sectional semi. And this is, I think, the position that Coach We Met has been looking for. And, you know, I, and I heard back to the game last year that I called when Lakeland came into town to play Medford. At that point, they had a similar similar record to what they had this year at that middle point of the season. They played a really tough non-conference schedule. I think last year they played with Pond, Beaver Dam, you know, Aquinas. Like the really, and that's the schedule you want, because it's going to pay off, just like the nominee schedule has too. So Lakeland has one of the better built rosters in the state. And you have literally two girls playing D1, possibly another two collegiate girls that are on their team too. I mean, this team has skill. They've got size. They've got a blend of everything. So it's going to be a thriller to the end. And 
with Menominee playing as well right now, it's tough to say who's going to come out in this one. Absolutely. We talked a little bit. You got the girl. Last I checked, she was number five in all in state history for girls basketball scoring. Juliana Wimet, averaging 20.4 a game. She's passed 2,500 points in her career. Uh, so she has dominated. And dominated the Great Northern and, and for a, a long time. And a finalist for Miss Basketball Award for the season, too. Yeah, she has been an um, absolute beast for all four years. Her sister, Christina Wimet, averaging 19 a game. Lily Fortier, 8.6. Sailor Timmerman, 8.6. Ava at Evenhouse, 6.7. So, I mean, there's, again, there's a lot of balanced scoring, but it's really been... You know, those two Met girls at the top with the defense they play, you know, they get a lot of baskets running. And it's something that has been kind of the, the basis of their team for a long time. And another big skill, they're also a really good rebounding team. I mean, you'll see Sailor Timmerman put up anywhere from 10 to 15 rebounds in any given game. Uh, you'll see uh, Christina Wimet will put up her share of rebounds. Uh, they just they even house with grab her rebounds. They do a lot of other things well besides score, and that's what's great about having a balanced team. It's so hard to beat them. And, and even though they have six losses, I don't think that reflects on who they really are. They're a way better team than 21 and six, or 22 and six, but that's, that, that's their identity. That's a team that they're gonna be a force with. Yep. You talk about rebounds, Christina Wilmette leads the team 8.1 per game. Sailor Timmerman, eight. Juliana Wilmette, 6.5. Ava Evenhouse, 5.8. Gail Quaid gets four a game. So, I mean, yeah, there isn't one person that does one thing on either team, really, at this point. And but Lakeland's only got three seniors, too. If you think about it, Juliana Wimetz was the main senior, but you got, like, Christina Wimetz, Sailor Timmerman, uh, Evenhouse. They're all underclassmen. So, absolutely. We got about a minute and a half here. We're going to take a quick spin around the rest of the games today as we get set for what should be a fun day of basketball. So you got Arrowhead, Brookfield East, Lakeland, Menominee, the one we're here with, Cedarburg, Notre Dame, McFarland, Union Grove, Pius XI Catholic, Pewaukee. Pewaukee might send both teams to state this year. West Salem, Somerset. Lapon Prairie to Sheen. West Salem as well, sending both teams. Yep. Milwaukee Academy of Science Racine Lutheran. Colfax, Neilsville. Neilsville looking to keep the undefeated season alive. Michicot, St. Mary's. Cuba City, Aquinas. Prairie School, Laconia. Siren McDonald. That should be an interesting one. Belmont, Blair Taylor. Kimberly, Germantown. Hortonville, Nina. Edgar versus Wavina, Leona. Edgar looking another upset, possibly. Franklin, Kevin Moraine, Kewaska Freedom, and Oakfield and Albany in Division 5 to wrap things up. We're going to turn it over to Bryce Kelly down at the scores table. He'll walk us through National Anthem and starting lineups. We'll be back with the call of this one in just a moment. Welcome to Raider Hall for today's WIA Division 2 sectional finals featuring the Menominee Mustang.
starting lineups, National Anthem are in the book. We are ready for basketball. We are 36 minutes away from sending one of these teams to the Resch Center. It is Timmerman and it is Quilling in the center circle. Ball is up and Menominee will win the tip. That'll get out for Burt. And they'll hand that one off and Menominee will come to the front court. Get it over here near side, Jacobson. Jacobson down into the corner, Quilling. Quilling down along the baseline, Burt. Kick that one back out, three pointer from the top. Yes! Mary Berg opens it up with a three. Backcourt pressure as they will get that one over here near side to Quaid. Quaid gets across the timeline, leaves that one back off to Juliana Wamet. Wamet throws that one to Timmerman off her hand and will not be saved. Timmerman wasn't, wasn't looking for it and just uh, lucky enough got a hand to it at least. But I think she expected to set a screen there on that set play though. I think uh, it was just a miscommunication there. Burt will. Berg will have it in the backcourt, gives that one off Jacobson. Jacobson gets that one far side, Schoenberger. Schoenberger into the middle for Quilling. Quilling gets that one down on the baseline, foul. Christina Wilmette will commit her first team first. That's the last thing the Lakeland needs, is either the Wilmette or Sailor Timmerman in foul trouble. They spin that one around, shot up, box. Sailor Timmerman just putting the hand up on that one. Get that one ahead. Timmerman threw her hands out of bounds. Passing just not there here early going for Lakeland. And they love to push transition too, so that's one thing Menominee's going to have to do is transition deep. Berg gets that one back over here. Jacobson against the pressure. Then Menominee throws it away. Trying to get that one past Juliana Wamet. They'll swap out inbounders. They'll bring over Lily Fortier. Fortier gets that one into Juliana Wimet. Juliana Wimet driving in. She'll flip it up, gets it to go. First points of the game for Lakeland. Little set play there, looks like. Three to Menominee. In trouble, they'll get that one across to Berg. Berg will get across the timeline into this one, two, two. Get that one down to Schoenberger in the corner. Schoenberger gets that one back up top for Berg. Berg gets it over here near side Quilling. Back to Berg, they'll get it in the middle for Jacobson. Jacobson floats, can't get the roll off the rim. Rebound back up, can't get it to roll. Rebound collected up by Kale Quaid and Lakeland is running. Get that one up top, that is Christina Wimet. Christina Wimet picks it up, needs to get rid of it. Juliana Wimet has to track it down in the corner. Wimet looking to drive, gets right down the lane, up, gets it to roll in. Open lane for Juliana Wimet, she takes it. I could be wrong, but I think Juliana Wimet set the state record for which the girls steals for in a career. Yes, she has that, she's fifth in scoring. She's get that one underneath, up, oh, yes. Oh, looking on the wrong side of the score sheet, Brooklyn Burt gets two on that one, 5-4. So gets back up top here for Wimet. Juliana Wimet, connection oh, underneath, pass. Wade, up, oh, yes. Beautiful pass. 6-5, Lakeland with the lead. Jacobson has to pick it up, gets it over far side for Schoenberger. Schoenberger back to Jacobson. Jacobson will get across the timeline. Lakeland drops into a man-to-man. -man. Over here near side for Quilling. Quilling looking, gets that one all the way back across Schoenberger. Schoenberger up top for Berg, it'll reset, gets it over here, back to Berg. Berg back over here near side for Quilling. Quilling cross court for Schoenberger, closed down quickly, couldn't take the three, gets that one up top, Berg. Long possession here for Menominee as they get that one into the middle. Looking down low, shot up, can't get it to roll, gets her own rebound, blocked. That's gonna get tipped around, Sailor Timmerman will end up collecting. Juliana Wimet pushing quickly, Wimet into the lane, she passes that one up, up, yes! Nice assist by Wimet, finding Lily Fortier all alone on the block. Eight, five, Lakeland. The IQ of Juliana Wimet is so superb though, her vision and be able to make plays. That one almost thrown away, collected up. Three from the corner, doesn't roll in. Rebound tipped around, that will be collected up by Quaid. Quaid needs to get rid of it, gets it to Portier, and the defense will back out for Menominee. Front court, get that one over here, near side Portier. Portier back up top for Christina Wimet. Christina Wimet throws that one away, might have been tipped. 
Mary Berg running with it. Berg stops. She pops a three. No. Rebound collected up and a foul. Sammy Jacobson is going to get called for the foul. Her first, team first. That's almost a disadvantage as we'll see Elizabeth Piles and Anna Wheeler check in. Berg and Schoenberger will check out for Menominee. That one in Juliana Wamet. Wamet. We're gonna drive, flips that one ahead. Little pass to Gail Quay. Quay gets that one in the corner. Fortier. Fortier looking. They do get that one to Juliana Wamet. Wamet looking to drive in. She'll pop in the lane. Gets it to go. Six already for Juliana Wamet. 10-5 Lakeland. Kyles back the other side. Mary Berg will get it across the timeline. Back over here to Kyles. Kyles back to Berg. Little 2-3 now from Lakeland as they switch the defenses up. Kyles will have it far side, they'll get it to Berg. Double team comes for her, back up top, Kyles. Kyles in the middle, they're gonna flip that one around, tipped away. Wade got a hand on that one, we met, we'll push it front court. We met, backs it out, has to pick it up, gets it over here near side, Fortier, Fortier, back up top, we met. We met looking, gets out inside, tipped away. Nice play there from Quilling. Quilling will bring it front court, gets that one, but that one's tipped away. Wimette got a hand on it. Wimette flips that one ahead quickly. Fortier, Fortier underneath, has that one blocked. Fortier on the line, Menominee basketball. Elizabeth Piles on the transition defense getting a hand on it. Those last three possessions by both teams, all defensive sequences right there. Menominee will look to bring this one up against with Wimette standing, kind of playing the hop, top of a, see what they just said it on the defense. A little trap there, not able to do it. Kyles will take the jumper at the lane, yes! Ends the run, Kyles gets the jumper to go. 10-7. Christina Wimet inside, a foul won't go, but Christina Wimet will go to the line for two. Foul will go against 12, Ashley Quilling. Her first, team second. Wimet at the line for two. Rattles off the first one. Steven, I do love the tempo by both teams right now, but one thing Menominee is trying to do is they're trying to adjust to swap into their zone defenses by Lakeland. And they're capable shooters, obviously, with uh, uh, Kyle's hitting that first three. They've got some opportunity, or I should say Mary Berg, that one three. Mary Berg's got the only three in the game. Second free throw is good for Ramette. She has one now. 11-7, 12.55 remaining. Comes across the timeline. Berg gets that one down into the corner for Kyles. Back up top, Berg, back to Kyles. Kyles puts it on the floor, sends that one all the way across. A little high, couldn't snap off the three. Gets that one in the middle, Wheeler. Wheeler kicks it back out. Three-pointer, doesn't go, rebound. Kyles not able to collect it, but they're gonna say last touch by Quaid. Menominee's actually rebounded the ball especially well right now, especially having at least three or four offensive boards too. I believe so that was uh, Brooklyn Burt that's got a couple already herself. Kyles along the baseline, gets that one in quick. Burt had it tipped away. Collected up up top, it'll get to Burke. Burke over here near side, Kyles. Kyles looks to get down to the baseline, can't. Spins that one back up top, back over to Kyles. Kyles gets that one inside, pressure comes immediately. That's gonna be tipped away. That's gonna stay here. And coach we met, I don't know if you can see it on screen, losing at least one jacket. Well, it's always, it's always kind of a thing, how long, coach it wears a jacket, how long does it last? As Berg and Kyles will come out. It's way too warm in Raider Hall anyway for having oh, extra layers on. Absolutely. Get that one in, they try and go up the ladder, not there, they kick that one back around. Three from the top, doesn't go. Rebound tipped around, and it's gonna stay here again. They're gonna say it was last touched by Gail Quaid. Coach Wimet asking who touched it. To get that one in underneath again, kick that one back up top. That is Jacobson. Jacobson over here near side, Quilling. Quilling back up top, Jacobson around far side, Schoenberger. Schoenberger gets around Wimet, gets it up top for Jacobson over here near side, tipped away. It's gonna stay here again. <laughs> 
I think Quaid has touched everyone that's gone out of bounds so far, according to the officials. Feels like the sequence has lasted for a good 10 minutes right now on the side of the floor. The nominee looks to inbound again. They do need to get it in. They get it up top. Get it back here for Quilling. Quilling turning. Kicks that one all the way across. They'll get it into the corner. Three pointer. Rattles off. Rebound collected up. Back up. Yes. Long possession. Anna Wheeler, the rebound and the putback. Wimet runs quickly the other way. Kicks that one in. The quartier underneath. Up. Yes. Again, Wimet drawing the defense, finding the open player. I would say she's got to have three or four assists right now as well. Over here near side, Jacobson. Jacobson, entry pass for Wheeler. Wheeler gets that one to Burt. Burt kicks it back up. They'll go all the way around for Jacobson. Jacobson driving in. She gets cut off in trouble. Kicks that one out for Quilling. Quilling driving in, flips it over here near side. Back around for Quilling. That one tipped away. Got down to Burt. Couldn't get the shot to go. Knocked out of bounds. That will be. Lakeland basketball, you saw a little celebration there for Kale Quay. Sailor Timmerman's defense has been phenomenal to start this game. He has been a force. I know Bird has two offensive boards, but it seems like Timmerman's got at least a half a dozen deflections as well. A little bit of backcourt pressure here. Juliana Wimet with it. She calls off Evenhouse. Now Evenhouse gets it over here near side. Back up top for Wimet. Wimet looking. Bring it over far side. Now she'll look to drive. Kicks it over here in the corner. Fortier will snap off the three. Not there. Rebound tipped around. And a foul on Menominee. That will be Ashley Quilling. That'll be her second, team third. Foul on the Mustangs, number 12. Ashley Quilling, her second. You're going to leave her out there. 10.42 remaining. Fortier to trigger the inbound. Gets that one in even house. Even else, up top, Christina Wimet. Christina Wimet will snap it off from high, and that's going to miss everything. Tipped on the way through. Had, had, there was one, there were two options there for an official. It's either a tip or it was a foul, because there was a lot of contact with the arm. Watching that live, though, just from my end, I'm like, I don't think that was just an air ball. I think there had to have been some kind of contact. Yeah, Christina Wimet doesn't do that. She, as Juliana Wimet can't handle it. Tipped away, Menominee pushing back the other way. This is Bird. Burke pops at the free throw line, can't get it to fall. Rebound ripped away by Juliana Wimet. Wimet flips that one ahead. Fortier all alone behind the defense up. Yes. Six for Lily Fortier. 15-9. Burke gets it over here near side for Schoenberger. Schoenberger back up top Burke. Burke will back it back out, gets it back over here. Schoenberger, Schoenberger, entry pass underneath. Wheeler up that one. Don't know, but rebound collected up, blocked again. Two blocks on that one. They get that one ahead for Fortier. That one will be too far out of bounds. The transition, you can tell Manami is still trying to adjust to it in the defensive end, because Lakeland is pushing. I bet you about four or five baskets have been in transition for the Thunderbirds so far. As Quilling will bring it across the timeline, get that one around, it'll end up at Schoenberger's hands in the corner, back up top for Jacobson, back to Berg, Berg will snap off the shot. No, rebound collected up by Timmerman. And again, they go for Lily Fortier, and again, just a bit too far. And I think if you're Coach Wimet, you're probably okay with missing a few of those for the ones that you do get out of it. I can see Coach Hartman's like, girls, we gotta get back. You've gotten beat several times already on, the, on transition. I mean, we can't let that if we wanna stay in this game. Berg, over here near side. That is Quilling. Quilling gets that one back up top, Berg. Berg back over here, Quilling. Quilling tries to get the entry pass too wide, right into the gentleman from Channel 7. No, that's not 7, that's 9. That's uh, Noah Mandelfeld, I think. Yeah. There. They're all uh, here, though, right? They're all here. <laughs> we met, flips that one ahead around here into the corner. Fortier will take the three, not there. Rebound collected up by Wheeler. We cross the midway point of the first half. Berg will have it at the top. Berg gets it over here to Quilling. Quilling gets that one around into the corner. Schoenberger, Schoenberger brings it back to the top. Thought about the three, didn't take it. Gets out back up top, they'll get it in the middle. Jumper at the free throw line, doesn't go. Rebound collected up by Sailor Timmerman. And we met running the other way. We met down the lane, gives that one up. Fortier, Fortier has the block. Able to get the rebound, trying to get out. Coach Wimet was looking for a timeout. Luckily didn't get it as her as Lakeland able to hold on to it. Sailor Timmerman gets that one inside. Christina Wimet 
Christina Wett turns up, no, rebound tipped around. That'll be collected up by Sammy Jacobson. Jacobson pushing front court. Jacobson hands that one off for Quilling. Quilling holding at the top, gets that one far side, Mary Berg. Berg back over here for Quilling. Quilling looking back up top, Berg. Berg can't take the three, now she'll take the two. Rattles off, rebound underneath, collected up by Jacobson. Jacobson will put it up, gets it to roll in. Over the top of the, you know, much shorter player going over the top there. That one will flip through for Evenhouse. Evenhouse gets out back to Wimet. Wimet driving in, gets past the charge attempt, but it changes the shot. Rebound collected up underneath by Sailor. Timmerman just ripped away. Schoenberger rips it away. Now Menominee in transition, but they're not able to handle it. Gets out back up top, Berg. Berg puts it on the floor. She'll take a jumper in the lane. Can't get it to go. Rebound collected up there by Wimet. Evenhouse to the front court. No, excuse me, that's Wimet to the front court. Gets it over here near side. Portier almost goes through her hands. Back to Wimet. Wimet gets a screen, can't do much with it. Now looking to drive down. Kicks that one out here for Evenhouse. Evenhouse up top for Sailor Timmerman. Timmerman holding, gets it over here near side. Wimet. And Coach Wimet is going to take a 30 second timeout. We are going to take it with her. 7 17 remaining, 15 11. Lakeland with the lead. We'll be back right after this. Are you ready for a faster and easier mortgage process? Tap Lending combines the speed and efficiency of technology and people and a great local bank. The perfect combination for your mortgage. Welcome back. I'm going to give a quick shout out to the family of Sailor, Sloan and Allie Timmerman, who's watching from home. Tom and Elaine Timmerman, their grandparents, as well as their aunt and uncle, Dave and Kim Hughes as well as their cousins, Hillary, Logan Brunner, and Carson and Hunter Hughes. So if you want to give some shout outs at halftime, drop them in the comments. We'll take a look at those during the half. 7-17 remaining, 15-11. Portier will be inbounding. Coach Harmon, barking instructions. That one will be tipped away. Tried to force that one into Christina Wimet. Jacobson, front court. Jacobson looks to turn the corner, not there. Gives that one out. Kyles will take the three, not there. Rebound comes down to Fortier. The shot selection has been a little bit questionable right now for the Mustangs, selling for a lot of perimeter and mid-range shots. Wade, and she shuffles the feed. I've seen so much of that this, for some reason this year especially, where you're just, that little extra slide. It's not even necessarily that they're like taking an extra step, but they're sliding feed as they come set. Well, they want to take that extra step because they want to take that initial step to the basket. That one will be tipped out of bounds. I feel like there's been a lot of offense, but at the same time, the defensive game is more of what this game has been. 6.50 remaining. We'll get Monopoly, we'll get Jacobson set. They try to get a pass into Kyle's not there. That'll come back out here to Berg. Berg will bring it back across the top. Berg backs that one back out, gets that one over far side, Schoenberger back to Berg between the circles. In the middle, looking, trying to find an opening inside. That is Jacobson, Jacobson has to kick it back out, Berg. Berg gets that one over far side, Schoenberger, Schoenberger back up top, Berg. Berg holding, gets that one over here near side, Kyles. Kyles back up top, and he'll get it back. Now in the middle, little shove jumper in the lane, that misses everything. Nobody's really been able to get a run going to really get the gym loud. It's been kind of an interesting, kind of a murmur in here so far. As this one, Juliana Wimet will bring this one front court. Wimet spinning that one around. That'll be tipped out of bounds. Stays here. Trying to find Fortier on that block. Obviously, we cover a lot of Medford, so we know how loud this gym can get when things are going right. It feels like Lakeland's up by at least 10 in this game so far, but they just haven't been able to break it open. They that one inside, tipped away. <laughs> Kyle's got a hand on it, ended up in the hands of Brooklyn Bird. And Jacobson brings it front court. Jacobson gets that one over for Bird. Mary Bird puts this one back on the floor, spins it back across the top, can't take the three. Gets that one over, they were looking for Bird underneath, not there, he'll get it back up top, Bird. Bird will go across Kyle's. Kyle's puts it on the floor, driving in, she gets cut off, kicks that one up top, Bird. Bird will take the three, yes! 
Mary Berg, her second three, cuts the lead to one. We met. Flips that one ahead, Quaid. Quaid gets that one to Christina Wimek. Christina Wimek will take the three the other way, miss all the way over the top. That one will come down, and it will be Schoenberger getting that one ahead quickly, Jacobson. Jacobson up top, Schoenberger. Schoenberger back to Jacobson. Jacobson will drive in. Flips that one up, gets it to roll. Four for Jacobson, Menominee has the lead. We met, front court. Hits that one to Christina Wimek. Christina Wimek, step up another three, yes. Hits that one, gets the lead back for Lakeland, 18-16. Mary Berg pushing this one across the timeline. Berg looking, ball fake, we'll get that one over here near side, Schoenberger, Schoenberger back up top, Berg. Berg spins that one around Kyles. Kyles brings that one all the way back across. Three-pointer here from the near side, yes! Sophia Schoenberger hits the three. 19-18, this one will get all the way over Christina Womet. Christina Womet for three, back rim, no. Rebound collected up by Evenhouse. Evenhouse, that was a spin around for Juliana Womet. Womet gives that one off Quaid. Quaid will get it to Fortier. Fortier thought about three, didn't take it. Back up top, Juliana Womet. Womet looking for an opening. Berg will poke that one away. It's going to stay here. And that'll see Sailor Timmerman check in for Lakeland and Anna Wheeler check in for Menominee. Berg and Evenhouse will come out. Lakeland, I'm not, a little confusion on the inbound play. Trying to figure out who's going to take it. It will end up being Christina Wamet. Ready to go, they get that one out, Juliana Wamet. Christina Wamet trying to set her up at the top. Good defense there from Jacobson. Back over here, Juliana Wamet. Wamet puts it on the floor, backs this one out. They'll set a half court play. Get a screen, not there, gives it off Quaid. Quaid back to Juliana Wimet. Four, four minutes remaining in the half. Christina Wimet will back off. Look at that one to Fortier between the circles. Fortier hands over back to Juliana Wimet. Juliana Wimet driving in, flipping, foul counted. Foul goes against to Mary Berg, her first, team fourth. And Wimet will go to the line to try and complete the three-point play and get back it out to a two-point lead. There was also kind of back rim, no, rebound collected up there by Jacobson. They get that one ahead quickly for Schoenberger. Schoenberger gets that one back out, Berg. Berg cross court here for Kyles. Kyles back up top for Berg. They get that one in the middle, flip that one down low. Wheeler off bounce, gets it to go. 21 20 Menominee. We met front court. Spins that one around for Christina Wimet. Christina Wimet gets out up top. Wait, through the hand, she's able to tip it, but out of bounds. And starting to see a little more defensive pressure from Menominee. Think they've kind of found what they need to do, and now Coach Wimet's going to take a timeout. Not second 30 second timeout. We will take it with them. 21 20, Menominee with the lead. 322 remaining. We'll be back right after this. Clinter Insurance, we know you want to protect your business. The Clinter Insurance team will help you choose the insurance package and plan that fits you and your business. At Clinter Insurance, protecting your business is our top priority. Clinter Insurance. Welcome back. 21-20, Menominee with the lead. They've come back in this one. They trailed. And it wasn't writing it down, but they trailed by as much as like five, six in this one at times. Might have been more. I think seven, it was 15 seven. to eight. 15 to eight, was, 15 the, to eight. was the biggest margin so far. Menominee's led by as much as two. They lead by one now. Menominee will have the basketball. And Menominee's made some adjustments here in the defensive end. They've taken the transition game though. They've been getting back from the pressure of Coach Harmon. Uh, it's been a different perspective, so now Lakeland needs to go and make some adjustments to find different ways to score. They've been a little bit uh, has, are, uh, happy at the perimeter shooting right now, um, so they need to kind of balance it out, look for better ways to uh, get inside as well. Yeah, Sammy Jacobson has to come off, a little bloody nose, so she'll get tended to. They check the floor, make sure there's no blood. They don't see any, we'll get ourselves back underway. Burr. Across the big Raider in the center of the floor. 
Looking to extend on this lead. Berg gets it over here near side. Kyles. Kyles back to Berg. Berg backs it back out, gets it back over Kyles. Looking inside, not finding it. Berg will have it at the top. Kyles gets it here near side. Cross court for Schoenberger. Schoenberger back up top for Berg. Minami not taking any chances here, and they're just holding. I wonder if they're trying to hold out for a final shot at this point already. Now we will see we met come forward, and now they'll put a pressure on. Get that one over far side. A little bit of defensive pressure here. Back up top, Berg. Berg will have to play it pretty quickly here. Counting. Berg gets it over here near side. Kyles. Kyles holding. Gets it back around Berg. Berg thought about the three. Not able to take it. Berg flings it back over here. Kyles. Kyles back up top. For Schoenberger. Back to Kyles. Kyles. Cross court for Berg. Berg will snap off the three. Yes! Third three of the game for Mary Berg. She has nine. And it is a four point lead. Back across the top, Christina with metal snap off the three, yes! We talked about one three in the game at about the eight minute mark. Berg had the only one, she's got two now. We've had seen them all raining down as they'll get that one inside, Wheeler, Wheeler underneath up, yes! Six for Anna Wheeler. That was late defensive rotation on that backside. Led to an easy basket. Juliana Wimet flips that one off Quaid. Quaid will get that one up top, Sailor Timmerman. Timmerman flips that one inside for Christina Wimet. Turns, shoots, rattles off. Rebound collected up there by Bird. 132 remaining. Coach Harmon walking up the floor with Mary Bird and the official giving instructions. He's standing at the scorer's table right now. So that one flips back around for Mary Bird. Bird gets out over here near side for Schoenberger. Back up top, Bird. They're gonna switch sides. Get that one into the corner for Kyles. Kyles inside, Burt, no, rebound, no! Rebound collected back up, that will be Quaid. Running the other way, one minute remaining. Juliana Wimet down the lane, flips it up, gets it to go! 10 for Juliana Wimet. Under a minute to play, 26-25. Menominee with the lead. Here near side, Schoenberger. Schoenberger, pressure comes. Gets that one up top for Berg. Berg spins around, gets that one to Kyles on the far side. Back up top, that's gonna come back in the middle, taken away! Juliana Wimet jumps the pass, Wimet the other way up, no! Wimet looking for a foul, not there. 28 seconds remaining and Coach Harmon very clearly, one finger in the air, they're playing for one here, 20 remaining. Berg over here near side for Schoenberger, Schoenberger. Back to Berg, 12 seconds, no pressure yet. Nine, Berg is gonna go to work, almost carries. Berg gets it over here near side, Kyles four. Kyles, and that one's gonna be out of bounds. Lakeland will have two seconds. That could be a critical play. This game ends not in Menominee's favor, right there. They get that one in, Wimet. Wimet gets a screen, hard screen, shot at the buzzer off the rim! And Berg having a hard time getting up. She got hit hard. She'll have 10 minutes to kind of recover from that one. But we are going to step aside here. 26-25, Menominee with the lead. We're gonna take a quick break. We'll be back with first half stats and thoughts coming up here in just a couple minutes. Winter Insurance of Northern Wisconsin is your qualified, experienced team for custom insurance packages for your vehicle, your home, and your family. At Clinter Insurance, protecting your family is our top priority. Clinter Insurance. I absolutely feel that Tiger Lily is getting a great education with RVA. She is challenged and she's not bored. She enjoys her classwork. I love the teachers. The teachers are the best part. My teachers are very friendly and they're easy to reach out to when you need help with an assignment. The teachers are always there when you need help. What I love about RVA is the flexibility, first. But second is that Tiger Lily is so happy with this school, with her teachers, and with what she's learning. It's awesome. I had an employee at once ask me to prioritize family, faith, and business. And I put them in that order in particular. For each one of our employees, it's family first. 
you do what is best for you and your family, then the rest of it will take care of itself. It's about making sure you make the best decisions for you and your family. I spluced my phone in the road crater? Am I covered or no? Well, hey Carm, you're never gonna believe this. A sturgeon just hit my Chevy. Am I covered or no? Interesting. And yes. I had a couple 30 packs explode in my garage. Am I covered or no? I've been there before, bud. It's a sad day. Oh. Aren't you two-time Rose Bowl champ, Bill Ferrario? Yeah, you better call Marshfield Insurance and ask for Premium Boy. Whether you're hitting fish or hitting football players, the agents at Marshfield Insurance have the answers. Uh, one thing that surprised me about the RVA is the want to do school, whereas it was kind of a, a struggle before. All of the educators, the staff, the therapists, the specialists, everybody is so knowledgeable. And my favorite thing is that we all work together as a team for the kids. I really feel like we're partners with the RVA. I just love it so much. <laughs> I know I've said that before, but like I love the RVA. <laughs> Our experience in the RVA has been wonderful. The teachers are extremely supportive and Simon really seems to enjoy it and is making friends and he's more socially active now than he was in a traditional school. Something I want other kids to know is that even though it seems like you're not going to make friends, you actually are. I like how the RVA provides a, an environment that more suited to my needs. At Fairway Independent Mortgage Corporation, we are here to help you with your local home needs. Whether it's your first house, or your dream house, or your last house, Fairway is here for you. We care about our customers because they are not only our neighbors, but our friends. We are a locally owned mortgage company, and we pride ourselves on helping better our community and our customers. If you would like to learn more about your home options, please give me a call today at 715-384-7878. Forward being a mutual, it's, uh, it's a great opportunity for customers that uh, bank with us because it allows us to make decisions for the long term, for our community, for our customers, and for our employees. We're not driven for profit as most companies are, so we can make decisions that are good for our communities, our employees, and our depositors, and that, that's very unique. RVA has helped. Welcome back, 26-25. Menominee with the lead here at the half. We'll take a spin through the first half stats. We will start with the Lakeland Thunderbirds.
Juliana Wamet leads the way. She has 10, 0 of 1 from the line. Christina Wamet, 7, 1 of 2 from the line. Lily Fortier, 6. Kale Quaid, 2. The Lakeland Thunderbirds go 1 of 3 from the free throw line. Flip the book over. Mary Berg leading the way. She has 9, all from behind the arc. Anna Wheeler adding six. Sammy Jacobson, four. Sophia Schoenberger, three. Elizabeth Kyles and Brooklyn Burt each adding two. Menominee did not shoot a free throw in that first half. Actually, the amount of work that, that Burt has gotten down in the you know, rebounding, uh, low post uh, opportunities, it feels like she's got more than her, her lone basket, though. But I think Coach Harmon's going to want to see more involvement with her. Their, their ball movement has been a lot better through Lakeland zone defense. Uh, they have negated a lot of the turnovers that they had earlier in the first half, whereas Lakeland needs to make adjustments now. They were they had how many points off turnovers and missed shots. Now it's been kind of quiet on that end, and they're trying to look for offense in the in the half court. They got a couple of shots, but I think they're over over looking at at that aspect as well. And you know, Lakeland is a team that they're capable of scoring the half court, like we saw as they picked the wrong side. I think they're used to shooting into that side. Of, no, no, they would always shoot into this side of the gym here. Obviously, Lakeland, probably a little more familiar with the gym here being it's, you know, in the Great Northern Conference, but um, take a look. You know, also another thing, you know, I'll get my thought through now that I was going, I was talking about with Lakeland, they're a team that can score in the half court, but they don't want to score in the half court. They want to score in transition. They want to be scoring, running the floor, finding those easy buckets like we saw them do, especially right around, the middle part of that half. It'll be interesting to see if the defense can pick up a little bit more here, but. The thing is, when you saw those opportunities, when you saw that pressure go to from uh, Menominee's full court, full court, I wouldn't say it's more of a pressure press, but a little pressure they ignited. Well, that way we met, drove by, you basically got numbers, and how many of those little baskets did he dump off to the four tier? So, I mean, that's what they kind of want to get back into. So that's kind of oh, dude, a few little audio adjustments. Yeah, I finally got a chance to look at the comments. Thank you for the heads up. I uh, do want to give a shout out to Bill Jung tuning in from North Dakota, cheering for the Mustangs. So looking here, minute and a half left. Matt, obviously former JV coach, but a coach nonetheless. You were in both locker rooms. What are you What are you saying to your team in a situation like this? Well, I think if you're Coach Harmon, though, of the Mustangs there, I think he loved the way that his girls responded to kind of the slower start, though, by Lakeland. I think it feels like Menominee wasn't ready yet. Lakeland, they started out right out of the gun. But I think if you're under pressure more, I, obviously Coach Wiemet is feeling that now, too, because the way they were scoring, they could have went after 40, 45 points in the half as a team. And... You know, shot selection, you know, wasn't as efficient. Uh, they had some turnovers there, too, that didn't go their way. Uh, Menominee made adjustments to kind of pull apart that zone defense a little bit. And they hit, Menominee hit some shots, too. So I think, you know, the defense, you know, they got to find ways to adjust to kind of negate some of those open looks and uh, find some more. I think they can get more involved in the post. They've got size, whether it's Timmerman or uh, Christina Wimet, they can get some low baskets down there and take better shots, I think, than Lakeland can come back. But right now, as we predicted at the beginning of the game, it's pretty even. There we go. All right. So Lakeland will start with the ball in the second half. All right, doing a few little audio adjustments here. We'll get it. There we go. So Lakeland will start with the basketball as they try and get this one rolling. Look to get this one in. They just do it. We met back around four, four tier. Back to Wimet. Wimet looking to drive. Has to back that one back out. Tries again. And she'll be fouled. Tried to force her way through. We'll see who they give this one to. They give it to five. That will be Sophia Schoenberger, her first, team first. Ducey Berg back on the floor. That's a good sign. She came off a little sore after a tough screen in right at the end of the half as Wilmette will get that one at the top. Wilmette looking. 
Brings it over here near side, flips that one around underneath Fortier. Fortier had to pick up her dribble, gets that one back up top with Matt. Well, Matt looking, gets a screen from Timmerman, gets that one around Quaid. Quaid looking back to Juliana Wilmette on the far side. Wilmette looking to go baseline. Spins around, foul, count it! Juliana Wilmette gets the basket to go, draws the foul. Burt commits the foul, her first. Already the team's second of the half. Wilmette will shoot the free throw. She's 0 for 1 from the line today. Make it 0 for 2. Rebound collected up by those 20, 23 isn't on our programs. Swing that one back around. Get that one into the middle to the Mysterious 23. I think it might be a uniform change. Looking, I believe that might be I believe that is actually Jacobson. I think she might have had to change uniform. Flip up, no, but a foul. Yeah, she might have had the one that had blood maybe on her jersey too. Yep, so Jacob, so Sammy Jacobson changes to number 23. We met, we'll go back to the line for two. Burt commits the foul, her second. Team third. Yeah, that is Jacobson. First free throw from Christina Wilmet. She gets that one. One for three now from the line. Wheeler will check in. Burt will come out with the two fouls. And again, it's a quick start out of the gates for Lakeland. Second free throw. Also good. 14 now for Juliana Wilmet. Berg will bring this one across the line. Gets that one over far side, Schoenberger. Schoenberger inside, Wheeler, Wheeler up, yes! Eight for Anna Wheeler. Quickly the other way, Juliana Wimette. Wimette kicks that one into the corner, Fortier. Fortier will snap off the three, back rim, no. Rebound collected up by Wheeler. And that one will be tipped away by, Ju by Juliana Wimette. That's gonna roll out of bounds. That is gonna stay here. High IQ play from Juliana Wimette. And when you average about four or five steals, whatever in a career game, that's those are the plays that you're, you know, she's used to making. They're looking good defense here on the Tampa. They get that one in for Christina Womet. Christina Womet turns, floats, yes. Nine for Christina Womet. 31-28. Berg into the teeth of a two, two, three. It looks like here gets it over your near side, Quilling. Quilling into the middle for Jacobson. Now a three from the far side, back rim, no. Rebound collected up by Quaid. And that one's gonna be lost. Picked up by Jacobson. Jacobson looking, gets it to Berg here on the near side. Berger snap off the three, no. Rebound collected up by Quaid. Juliana Wimette will push quickly front court. Wimette spinning around, gets herself, flips that one up, gets the roll. Had to wait, that one could have gone either way off the rim. Berg pushes that one back ahead quickly. Schoenberger, Schoenberger gets out of the middle, Jacobson gets it over here near side, Quillen, Quillen gets it back to Jacobson. And Coach Harmon is gonna take a timeout. 30 second timeout taken by Menominee, we'll take it with them, 15.38 remaining. 33.28, we'll be back right after this. Are you ready for a faster and easier mortgage process? Tap Lending combines the speed and efficiency of technology and people and a great local bank. The perfect combination for your mortgage. Check, check. Check, check, there we go. Sorry about that, trying to, trying to fix some volume gremlin, audio gremlins here. Hopefully this is a little better. Swing that one around, jumper up, yes! 
Sammy Jacobson gets the basket to go and they're gonna get a foul. That's gonna go against Jacobson. Couldn't quite get out of the way in time. Check, check. Check, check. That one's gonna come back around, loses her footing. Swing that one back through. That one's almost gonna be taken away, not there. That one's gonna be tipped through. Last touch, it's gonna stay here. Kind of a similar start to a similar start to what we saw in the first half, though, by Lakeland. Kind of a quick little start, but Manami kind of kept it within game. Christina Wilmette, three from the top, not there. Rebound, and they're going to get a follow on Fortier. That'll be a first on Fortier, first of the half. That's only the second foul called on Lakeland in the game. It's been a very you know, quick paced game, though, too. It's been. Absolutely. We're only about almost quarter to two. It's been a kind of a quick game. Berg brings this one across the timeline. Berg spins that one back around. Berg looking, gets that one over far side. Gets it around into the corner. That one's gonna swing back around. That's gonna come up over here near side. They're gonna send that one all the way over across court. That's gonna come back around, come over here near side. Looking to drive in, kick that one out. They're gonna bring that one back across to the top, get that one to Berg in the corner. Berg gets that one in the middle to Jacobson. Jacobson swings around, up, yes! Sammy Jacobson, two more. Wimette pushing quickly front court. Wimette kicks that one out far side. Swing that one back around, that's gonna get back out to Wimette. That one's gonna get down underneath and a block call. That's gonna go against the Menominee Mustangs. Berg will get a call for the foul, her second, team fourth. Team fifth, excuse me. Check, there we go. Should be a little better now on the volume. Oh, that one goes through the hands and that's gonna, that's gonna head the other way. There we, there we go, that should be better. Thank you guys for bearing with us on that. So fast paced, we couldn't check on a lot. <laughs> check on some of that stuff as we went through the game as Berg will get that one, get it over far side for Quilling. Quilling back up top to Berg. Berg gets that one over far side. The three back rim, no, Berg gets the rebound. Berg will back this one back out. Berg gets that one over far side, Quilling. Quilling gets that one into the middle, Jacobson. Jacobson the jumper, doesn't go. Rebound, Wheeler back up, yes! 10 for Anna Wheeler. One point ball game. We met, we'll snap off the three, yes! Juliana Wimette, she's been driving all game, stops and pops for a three. Lead is back to two. Berg spins that one around far side, Schoenberger. Schoenberger gets that one in the middle, Jacobson. Jacobson fakes the pass out, no, but a foul. Anna Wheeler will go to the line for two. Timmerman commits the foul, her first, team second. Wheeler at the line. First free throw is good. One more. 36-35, Lakeland with the lead. Chance to tie it up here. Wheeler, second free throw. Back rim. Rebound tipped around. It will be collected up by Timmerman. Well, Matt will push quickly back the other way. Well, Matt. Tries to get that one back around. Now she has to kick that one out for Tier. For Tier looking. Trying to find Wimette. That ball loose, tipped, and that's going to be Menominee basketball. Wimette lost her footing. Tried to tip it to Christina Wimette, but just couldn't quite get the path right. Again, it just feels like the same kind of start to this half as we had the last half, too. Lakeland kind of come out, came out quick, and Menominee stayed with it. Berg brings this one across to the timeline as they're gonna start handing out free popcorn, it might look like. I don't know, I mean, they could just save it for the for game two. So it comes back and gets over here near side. 
for Quilling. Quilling driving in, almost loses it. That one tipped. Quilling gets it back. Quilling taking away Juliana Womat. And that's going to be a carry. No, they're going to call it a double dribble. The ball kind of popped up on her, and popped up kind of on her hip, and there wasn't a whole lot she could do it, with and it. And then it got caught in her hand, so pretty much you were, it was game it was, over there. It was a travel, it was a carry, yeah. it was a something. Same, same result for all of them. So Berg back to the front court, down one. Berg flips that one out far side for Schoenberger. Schoenberger, pressure comes from Fortier. Schoenberger gets that one across for Quilling. Quilling looking to drive in. Flips up, no, no good. Couple of the Menominee fans leave. Foul, but right there, Schoenberger takes it back, gives that one to Wheeler, back to Schoenberger. Schoenberger up, blocked, but a foul. So yep, as I thought, it was for the contact down low. She got it clean up top, but you see that a lot. A lot of people get upset, but the foul's at the, you know, the lower part of the body. First free throw rattles out for Ashley Quilling, looking for her first points of the game. Chance here again to tie it. Whistle and a substitution. Quaid will come out. 40, Ava Evenhouse will check in. Huge free throw here. Gets it. We are tied. And now we will get a substitution. Burt comes back on. Wheeler will come out. 12-14 remaining. 36-36. See a little 1-2-2 two, two, uh, full court trap for the Mustangs. As we met, trying to find an opening. Gets that one behind Fortier. Fortier will load up. Yes! Was waiting for him to find that play again. Fortier left all alone at the block. Easy layup for her. Two point lead Lakeland. Berg gets this one over here near side for Quilling. Quilling cross for, for Schoenberger. Schoenberger for three. First second three of the game. Coach Harmon takes a full timeout. 39-38 Menominee will be back right after this. One thing that surprised me about the RVA is they want to do school, whereas it was kind of a, a struggle before. All of the educators, the staff, the therapists, the specialists, everybody is so knowledgeable. And my favorite thing is that we all work together as a team for the kids. I really feel like we're partners with the RVA. I just love it so much. <laughs> I know I've said that before, but like I love the RVA. <laughs> All right, there we go. Sorry about that, we're gonna try and fix the ball. There we go, we should be good on audio now. Sorry about that, having some issues with the soundboard today. Three, doesn't go. Rebound collected up underneath, that'll be kicked back out. Wimette will take another three, yes! Juliana Wimette hits another three. 41-39. Berg will bring this one across the timeline. Gets that one over far side for Schoenberger. Schoenberger has that one tipped away. Lakeland with the ball up to Wimette to the front court. Flips that one to Wimette. That one's going to be tipped away. Wimette able to collect. Gets that one. Evenhouse. Evenhouse in trouble. Gets that one other side. Timmerman. Timmerman up. No, but a foul. And Sailor Timmerman will go to the line for two.
Timmerman. First free throw is good. Second free throw for Timmerman. Three point ball game. Back rim, no. Rebound collected up underneath by Jacobson. Jacobson gives that one off to Berg. Berg will push it front court. Berg flips that one back over far side. Back up top to Berg. Berg gets that one back to Schoenberger. Schoenberger cross court here for Quilling. Back up top for Berg, back to Quilling. Quilling cross court. They're gonna get that one inside Wheeler. Wheeler underneath, up, yes! Seven, seven, six, 13 now for Anna Wheeler. As Juliana Wimet spins a round shot up, doesn't go, but she'll go to the line for two. Jacobson will get called for the foul. Her third, team six, team seven. Juliana Wimet will go back to the line for two. She's two for four tonight, or this afternoon, I should say. Gets the first. Lead is back out to two. 43-41. Long way to go in this one yet. Second free throw. Also good. 44-41, three point ball game. Berg will bring this one to the front court. Berg flips that one over far side. Schoenberger gets that one inside Jacobson. Jacobson looking to spin. Gets this one out, Quilling. Quilling driving in, flips it up, doesn't get it to go, but she'll go to the line for two. Foul's gonna go against Sailor Timmerman. That will be her third, team fourth. Nice move there by Quilling. Yeah, I mean, that's... <clears throat> Menominee's kind of been looking for that, though, at least from my perspective, though, too. As Quilling rattles out the first. Menominee's got a lot of shots, whether it's mid-range in that zone, perimeter. Um, it was nice to see him actually take it to the basket, though, and see if they can get their inside scoring going, too. As Sailor Timmerman will come out with those three fouls. Second free throw. Back rim as well. Rebound collected up underneath by Evenhouse. Wimet will push front court. Wimet looking to get down the lane. That one tipped. Jacobson takes it away. Not able to run with it, but they get the stop. Berg gets it here. Berg flips that one over far side for Schoenberger. Schoenberger. Has to get it back up top for Berg. Berg in the middle, Jacobson. Jacobson at the free throw line. Can't get it to go. Rebound comes down to Wimet. Wimet will push the other way. Wimet down the lane and, oh! They're gonna say that one is a block. That's gonna go against Schoenberger. That'll be her second, team eighth. Wimet will go to the line for two. First free throw is good. Second free throw. Also good. We met has been six for six since missing her. Yeah, six for six since missing her first two. That one's gonna go over far side for Schoenberger. Schoenberger gets over your near side, Quilling. Quilling, that one taken away. Evenhouse jumps the route. And the Menominee fans looking for a travel. No call to get that one underneath. That'll be tipped out of bounds. Schoenberger got a hand on it. Actually, that fish on the far side was actually running the other way before he saw the, the call there. So there probably was a travel there. Looking to get that one in. That one tipped. That's going to go out of bounds and stay here. And a Wheeler got a hand on it that time. Looking. They're going to flip that one in here for Juliana Wimet. Wimet looking, flipping. Gets that one up. Doesn't get it to go. Rebound tipped around. Fortier will come out with it. But she, as she was losing her feet, gets it right to Jacobson. Jacobson running the other way. Kicked around, and that one will be picked up by Lakeland. 8.54 remaining, Lakeland by five. We met, kicks that one out, Fortier. 
Fortier for three, no. Rebound comes down to Christina Womack. Christina Womack flips it up, no. Rebound tipped around. Wheeler just pushes that one out and will get a trap. And that's going to go against Evenhouse. That will be her first team fifth. I mean, if this was wrestling, that'd be a really good leg sweep. I mean, it wasn't intentional, but it was a pretty good leg sweep there from Evenhaus. That's a move that can help get a wrestler to state now, can it? It'll be Sammy Jacobson across the timeline. Over here, near side, back to Jacobson. They try and get Berg set up in the corner. Berg is going to take the three. No! Rebound comes all the way out for Jacobson. Jacobson. Trying to just get that one inside. Flips that one out here near side. Another three, doesn't go. Rebound collected up by Evenhouse. And we Matt pushing quickly the other way. When Matt down the lane flips, yes. 29 for Juliana Wimette. Other way, Berg flips that one up, not there. Eight minutes remaining. When Matt pushing quickly back the other way, when Matt. Tries to flip that one to Evenhouse, not there. Jacobson, back the other way, all alone, layup up, yes! Two more for her, she's got 10. Coach Harmon takes a timeout, 30 second timeout, we'll keep it here. What's your conversation? You're only down five, but it's really not felt like it's been the Mustangs paths right now. What, what are you kind of talking about in the timeout? Well, I think that was actually a really good timeout there by Coach Harmon to get the girls reset though because it, you know, we're getting, you know, it's less than eight minutes left of the second half. You're in the sectional final game. Uh, fear, you know, nerves are getting there too. Uh, they're like the sense of urgency, it's getting there. Trying to, you know, it's a good timeout to calm the girls down, get them reset. You know, look how I mentioned before about the first half where Lakeland started off good. Then Menominee kind of narrowed it down into their favor. They did it at the start this half before Lakeland came on another run. Now Menominee wants to do the same thing, and I think right now Coach Harmon will get him reset on both ends of the floor. 7.49 remaining, 48-43. Menominee two timeouts at Lakeland three, if I'm reading that right. Yep. Scoreboard here doesn't have it. In, we'll talk about all they get set in one of the good old school gyms in the state. Juliana Wamet will bring it across the timeline. Berg waiting for her. Wamet looks to turn the corner, drives in, double team comes, flips that one through, and good job there by Schoenberger just getting a hand on it. And Schoenberger didn't see it. Luckily, her hands were the reason that got that deflection. That was a good stop, though, too. Inadvertently, but a very good stop. Lakeland inbounding, they get that one into Wimet in the corner. Wimet trying to find an opening pass, Berg not there, gets that one inside Timmerman. Timmerman driving in, flipping up, that one might have been partially tipped. And we'll come back the other way, they'll leave that one off for Berg. Berg in the front court, flips that one over far side. Looking to drive in, gets that one underneath, that's gonna come all the way back, oh you're Berg. Berg will snap off the open three, front rim no, rebound comes down Jacobson. Jacobson trying to hold on to it. In trouble, gets that one out to Berg. Seven minutes remaining. Berg, pressure comes, gets that one to Quilling on the far side. Quilling all the way across. Get that one inside Berg, Berg looking, now she'll bring it back out. Wasn't Play wasn't there. Gets out of the baseline, Jacobson, Jacobson underneath, up, yes! Sammy Jacobson, 12 for her now. Wimette will push front court. Wimette crossing over, looking to drive in, not there. Gets that one out. That one tipped, but Christina Wimette able to recollect. Christina Wimette has it knocked away again. That'll stay here. Right into the hands of Medford girls assistant coach, Keith Wicks. Both Coach Wicks and Coach Falk, or, oh, why am I blanking? Three the other way, no. That's a very deep three, I would say. Yeah. Why am I blanking on that? Okay. Come quickly the other way, backing out. They're gonna send that one across, almost throws it away, does get to Quilling. Quilling gets that one back up here for Berg. Berg will snap off a three, yes! Tie game! Just like that, Mary Berger, third, th fourth three, she has 12. Jacobson, or excuse me, that is Quilling takes it away. Coach Harmon yelling for the carry, even though his team ended up with it. Berg 
Flips that one around Schoenberger. Schoenberger baseline. Pressure comes on Jacobson. Jacobson spins around underneath. Flips up, no. Rebound tipped around. Wheeler up, yes! Anna Wheeler gets the basket to go. 7-0 run for Menominee coming out of the timeout. Near side for Christina Womet. Christina Womet looking. Entry pass Timmerman. Timmerman can't get something up. Gets a shot up. Does get it to go. Weird, weird possession there for Lakeland, but it results in points. 50-50, 5-11 remaining. Far side Schoenberger. Schoenberger puts it on the floor. Gets that one baseline. Jacobson. Pressure comes from Evenhaus. Jacobson gets that one to Wheeler. Wheeler up top. Berg. Berg will take the three. Can't get it to go. Rebound comes down. Christina Wimet flips that one out quickly. Juliana Wimet. Wimet running with it. In the lane. Kicks that one out. Fortier. Fortier looking. Picks it up. Gets it back. Wimet. Far side. Juliana Wimet gets a screen from Fortier. Gets another screen. Can't do anything with it. Kicks it out. Timmerman. Timmerman. Hands that one off, Christina Womack. Christina Womack gets the screen, gets it over Fortier. Fortier looking inside, Evenhouse, Evenhouse up, gets it to go. First points of the game for Ava Evenhaus. 4.28 remaining, Lakeland back on top by two. Lakeland's gotta get their defensive rotations much quicker. There are too many open shots for the Mustangs. That one flips around here, Quillen, Quillen for three, yeah! Schoenberger nails the three! Menominee by one. Wimet, front court. Over here, near side for Christina Wimet. Christina Wimet gets it to Lily Fortier on the far side. Pressure comes on Fortier. Gets that one up top for Timmerman. Timmerman puts it on the floor. Trying to get an entry pass in. Christina Wimet gets it. Flipping up, gets it to go. 54-53 Lakeland. Berg gets the play from the bench. Berg flips that one over far side, Quilling. Quilling looking, gets that one along the baseline for Jacobson. Jacobson has that one knocked out of bounds. Timeout called by Coach Wimet. Full timeout. We will take it with them. 337 remaining, 54-53 Lakeland. We'll be back right after this. Clinter Insurance, we know you want to protect your business. The Clinter Insurance team will help you choose the insurance package and plan that fits you and your business. At Clinter Insurance, protecting your business is our top priority. Clinter Insurance. Fifty-four, fifty-three, Lakeland. Three thirty-seven remaining. Both teams with a timeout. The possession arrow does point to Menominee. To get you all reset here. We got a Shaneberger. Okay. And you know what? I look at my thing. I have that in my notes, and I didn't transfer it over to my scorebook. That is on me. Apologize to her whole extended family. That one loose underneath, gotten out, three. The other way off the bank, no. Rebound comes down, Sailor Timmerman. Another weird play, we've seen a few of those with just a little bit of chaos. We met, front court. Has that one tipped away, flipped around, looking for the foul, not there. We met, well, Christina Wimet will collect it in the back court. Gets that one off Fortier, Fortier trying to get through a couple screens. Up top, Sailor Timmerman, Timmerman holding. Three minutes remaining, gets over your near side, Juliana Wimet. Wimet gets it to Evenhouse. Evenhouse almost loses it. Now Christina Wimet will take the jumper. Not there. Rebound collected up. Ashley Quilling. That's a normal Berg. good shot though for her, but it's not the right time for it. Berg gets that one over far side. Quilling, Quilling along the baseline for Jacobson. Jacobson looking. Puts it on the floor. Gets around the initial pressure. A little short jumper. Yes! Sammy Jacobson. 
55-54, Menominee with the lead, two and a half to play. Juliana Wimet gets it over here near side for the other we met up, no, but a foul. Sailor Timmerman will go to the line for two. Foul goes against Sophia Schoenberger, her third. So we wait as Berg ties her sh just her shoe. Timmerman a lot more active the second half though, inside though for the Thunderbirds. One of two from the line so far today. Huge free throws here. Gets the first. We are tied. We very much well could come down to free throws to determine this game as well. As you mentioned, you know, we Mets missed a couple on the line so far tonight, or this afternoon. Yeah, keep thinking it's night. It's not, it's afternoon. We got one more yet today. Huge, huge second free throw. Is good, Lakeland by one. Quilling gives that one back off Jacobson. Jacobson front court. Gets it over here near side back to Jacobson. Jacobson spins it all around Berg. Berg will take the three, not there. Rebound fought for, that'll be collected up by Juliana Wimet. Two minutes remaining, see what Lakeland decides to do here. Spin that one around Christina Wimet. Christina Wimet slings it back over here near side through his hand, through Four tiers hands, but it's collected up by Juliana Womet. Juliana Womet driving in, trying to find an opening. No, they're going to wave it off. Waving the shot off. Foul was on the floor. It'll be one and one for Juliana Womet, though. Foul goes against Sammy Jacobson. That is her fourth. Team 10, so it's actually double two free throws for Juliana Womet. So yeah, it's double bonus. Foul was on the floor, but it's double bonus for Juliana. Either way, she's getting two free throws. First free throw from Wilmette is good. Two point lead. Menominee base wanted to travel, which they had maybe had a case for, but at the same time, you know, there was context. It's hard to kind of justify if you're an official which way you want to go, but. 30 for Juliana Womet. 20 of that in the second half. Berg, across the timeline, gets it to Quilling. Quilling, looking, gets that one in the middle, Wheeler. Pressure comes on her, flips it back out, Berg. 140 remaining. Far side, Quilling. Quilling gets that one baseline, inside Wheeler. Wheeler up, gets it to go! Cuts the lead to one. 58-57. Womet. Backing out, looking. She's trying to find an opening. Gets out underneath Sailor Timmerman. Timmerman turns up, can't get it to roll. Rebound and a foul. We'll see which way this one's going. Think that's going to be. It is. It's against Sailor Timmerman, her fourth. That's a big foul. It is a big foul. So, Menominee. Down one, minute 18 remaining. Berg gets that one over far side, Quilling. Quilling gets that one in the middle, Wheeler. Wheeler kicks that one back up, Quilling. Back up top, Berg. 107. Quilling, Quilling gets that one, baseline, Jacobson. Jacobson tipped, gets it back. Jacobson looks, goes up, and it's not going to count. Hit the support wire. Just bad luck there. We've seen a lot of those in our days calling games here in Raider Hall. That support wire is never a scorer's friend. That one will come out. Little full court press here under a minute. They're going to flip that one ahead. Evenhouse. Evenhouse gets front court. Evenhouse leaves that one off for Juliana Womet. She pass underneath, tipped away. Wheeler takes it. And Coach Harmon is going to take a timeout. Full timeout, 47 seconds left. We're going to take a quick 30 second break and then we're going to come back and talk about that one in just a moment. At Fairway Independent Mortgage Corporation, we are here to help you with your local home needs. Whether it's your first house or your dream house or your last house, Fairway is here for you. We care about our customers because they are not only our neighbors, but our friends. We are a locally owned mortgage company and we pride ourselves on helping better our community and our customers. If you would like to learn more about your home options, please give me a call today 
at 715-384-7878. Well, first time I think we'll say it, but a mistake there, a big mistake there from Juliana Wamet trying to force something up one. I mean, you don't want to get out, I'm assuming you don't want to get out of your defensive rhythm, but at the same time, you know, you shouldn't, at up one under a minute, you shouldn't be forcing anything, right? And especially with being the smartest player on the floor in Juliana Wamet, that's, a, that's probably a decision that you wouldn't see very often, but maybe being at the sectional final game where it's a one point game, less than a minute left, I don't know if it just was nerves or what, because that's not normally a play you would maybe see her made. Now she's made, she's probably got three or four or five turnovers tonight, but that could cost big though, if you're, if you're Lakeland. Absolutely, 47 seconds left. Menominee as they chase Coach Harmon off the floor. The Lakeland fans on the other side on their feet, more of them coming to their feet. Menominee fans doing as well. We'll ask the fans right in front of us to stay down, just so we get good camera angles here. Jacobson will do the inbounding. We apologize if we don't have yep. the full view here. That one will come around. We might have to lift the camera up here. Swing that one back through. That one's gonna come back around. Menominee holding. You know, fling that one around here near side. Get that one back up top, Berg. Double team comes on her, gets it to Quilling. Quilling spins that one around, driving in Jacobson. Jacobson up, gets it to go! <laughs> Sophia, excuse me, Sammy Jacobson gets the basket, 18. We met the other way, can't get it to go, rebound and a foul! 14.5, a foul, and Sailor Timmerman will go to the line to shoot two. Regardless of this result, this has been a true sectional final game. Everything you would want from a sectional final and then some. Timmerman at the line to shoot two. Huge free throws here. First free throw. Rattles off! Best they can do is tie it. Menominee will have a shot. You know what this is feeling a lot like? The sectional semi we did, Phillips Colfax. Timmerman needs this one to tie the game. Second free throw, back rim, rebound, even house, and a whistle and a foul. And even house will go to the line for two. Twelve point six, twenty three. That Sammy Jacobson. That is her fifth. Sixteen for Jacobson. You know, it's not very often we get everybody on our feet. But when you, we do, obviously, that means it's a big we're, moment. We're witnessing some pretty awesome basketball. So, Even House needs at least one of the two to tie this. First from Even House is good. We are tied at 59. Either way, Menominee will have 12.6, assuming they get the rebound on a miss. Second free throw. Also good, Lakeland by one. So waiting as they're gonna bring this one front court, Burt and Burt, Coach Harmon is gonna take a timeout, 9.7. We'll keep it here, it's a full timeout, but we'll keep it here. Ava Evenhaus, two free throws, gives Lakeland the lead. What kind of play are you drawing up here if you are Coach Harmon? The thing is, now if we expect it, which we will, Lakeland will come out in their zone, right? They've done a great job of getting Wheeler involved though, while they're, you know, they're good rotations though, trying to split that zone, getting that high post, low post action off the short corner, and Wheeler's gotten several baskets off that. So maybe they go for the simple play. Now they've been shooting, I'd say, around 35% from it beyond the arc, um, but you only need two, you don't one. I mean, go go for the two, go for the easier basket instead of going out, you know, outside the yard. And if you're Lakeland, are you collapsing everybody inside if the ball gets in? Probably not, because you still want to be able to, you defend know, the kick out. Especially with Berg, who's a great shooter, you don't want to leave her open because she might have, could very well hit that three, even though they don't need it. Could very well be an open shot that could 
you know, could give Menominee the game. So here we go, 9.7. They've got Quilling inbounding. Now they put extra pressure on. They get it to Berg in the backcourt. Eight. Berg looking double team. They get down inside Berg. Berg flips that one around Berg. Berg steps up. She'll take the jumper. Doesn't go. Wheeler the rebound up. No! And that is the buzzer. Nope, they're going to talk about time. Refs talking time. Now they're going to bring the third in. All three officials in on the discussion. I have no clue. I wasn't looking at the clock. Yeah, it looked like there was a foul. Sending teams to their benches. Uh, I mean, it looks like the Menominee girl got fouled, and I think that's obviously what the general reaction was. Yeah. But I'm not sure if they called the foul where we met Drew it there after she got the ball back. So. But they now, might be discussing more time to be added, though. I have a feeling that's what they're discussing. What a game, though. Either way, it's been something else here in Raider Hall this afternoon. It has been. Officials still talking. Clock shows zeros. See what they put back on, if they put anything back on it. They're still talking. We've got another official at the scorer's table. Bryce Kelly does a lot of officiating. Nope, it's over! Lakeland punches her ticket to the rush center! So Lakeland survives the late comeback attempt and Lakeland will play in Madison. So they're going to do an awards presentation. I'm going to sneak down onto the floor. We're going to grab some microphones here. We'll bring you the awards presentation, and then we'll have interviews with Coach Wimette and a ton of Thunderbirds coming up here in just a few minutes.
in this blue cable over there. Number 24, Kale Quaid.
good sailor in here. And then that final sequence, talk us through it there uh, down on the end when they got that shot up. Um, 
it's kind of all a blur to me right now, honestly. Like, I can't remember that much, but I know that we were all super excited. We were all super, like, freaked out when they called that one call. But it was awesome, just the team energy after that. And the easy one. You're heading to the state tournament. How does it feel? It feels awesome. I've been looking forward to this all year. Right. All right, Christina Wilmette, congratulations. Good luck at state. Thank you. We're going to grab a couple more players here, so stick around. All right, joined by Lily Fortier. Lily, eight tonight, six of those in the first half, and you kind of had a set play that worked for you where you can just be at the low block, get an easy pass on that one. Is that kind of the play you guys were looking to run for you throughout the game? Yeah, we just kind of like get everyone open. Like for me, they call me like the sneaky girl. So I tend to like go in and like they'll look the opposite way and then they'll look at them and they find me. So that tends to happen. Uh, you were on the floor for that final sequence down here for Menominee. What do you remember from that, and what did you see? Obviously, I was crying a little bit. It was a little blurry, but it was just so nice to be around my teammates. All I could think about was like the crowd. Everyone's standing up. Everyone's cheering so loudly. I just loved it, and everyone around me was just being happy. So there's lots of tears. And the easy question: You're going to state. How does it feel? I feel so great. I'm so happy that everyone's happy. I'm just happy to be here. Thank you. All right, sounds good. Congrats on the win, Lily Fortier. Eight tonight. Good luck at State. Thank you. All right, we got one more player to grab our other player of the game. That is going to be Ava Evenhouse coming up here in just a moment. Joined by Ava Evenhaus. Ava, we got to start at the end. Maybe the two biggest free throws of your life. Talk us through that whole process of nailing those two. <laughs> it was intense. And hearing all the yelling, and that was nerve-wracking. But I was able to shut it off just in my own thoughts. And as I keep telling everybody else, I just was praying through that whole thing, you know? Like, God will keep me calm through all that. So that's what I did. You know, and then obviously, you know, there's still 12 seconds left at that point. Talk us through that final 12 seconds, what you saw and what your role was in that. To make sure they don't get an easy shot and that we don't foul. And then it's over. There's that big pause there. Obviously, the officials took a few minutes to make sure everything was square. What was going through your mind and like with your teammates there at that point when you kind of didn't know if you'd won yet? Yeah. <laughs> it was nerve-wracking because we don't know what's going on and we want to win and it's just like, what's going on? But... We just came together as a team, and we just knew that it's either Juliana's going to the line, and we will make sure we don't foul, don't step up to the line, or it's a jump ball, and if they get it, they get it. But we just keep that hard defense that we've been doing this whole season. Now the easy one. You're going to state. How does it feel? Amazing. <laughs> it's such an honor, and I'm so excited to go with this team. All right, congrats on the win. Four points, but two no bigger than those last two. Ava Evenhouse, our other player of the game, congratulations. Good luck at State. Thank you. All right, I'm going to come back. Actually, I'm going to come back up. We're going to wrap things up here, and we will start getting set for the second game of our doubleheader coming up in just a few hours, so stay tuned.
All right, welcome back. Matt looking for his headset. We'll take a quick spin through the stats. We will start with the most with the Menominee Mustangs. Sammy Jake, or excuse me, Anna Wheeler, 17, 11 of that in the second half. Sammy Jacobson, 16, 12 of that in the second half. Mary Berg, 12 for three pointers. Sophia Shaneberger, nine. Brooklyn Burt and Elizabeth Kyles each with two. And Ashley Quilling adds one. Flip the book over. Third, we talked about it. 30 for Juliana Wimet tonight. 20 of that in the second half. Lily, or excuse me, Christina Wimet adds 11. Seven of that in the first half. Lily Fortier, eight. Sailor Timmerman, five. Ava Evenhaus, four, including two of probably the biggest free throws of her entire life. And then Cale Quaid adds two. That is going to wrap things up for us here tonight. Matt, any final thoughts on this one? You know, I don't get to see the girls' games as much, even let alone, you know, boys' games this year. But this is one of the best games. <laughs> I love playoff basketball at the high school level especially. You know, we love March Madness at the college level. But this is one of the best games I think we've got to witness here. Not for any of the direct teams that we cover, but this was just great basketball. And tough way to end for the Mustangs. They had a great year. Um, they, had, they played a great game. I mean, it was a tough way to end. But, hey, give credit for Lakeland repping the Great Northern Conference now at, in Green Bay at the Rush Center next week. Uh, let's see if they can keep that run going, and then we will uh, see what kind of basketball is in store tonight with Medford Rice Lake. Yep, we're not done with basketball yet. We're going to take a little break, go grab some food, and get set. We've got a boys' regional final coming up yet tonight. That will be... Medford, the number one seed, hosting five-seeded Rice Lake right here in Raider Hall. So if you're looking for some basketball to watch tonight, make sure to tune in for that one. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you to all of our sponsors that make these possible. This is our final girls basketball broadcast of the year. I'm Steve Akinick, Sports on Focus, along with Matt Wenzel. Thanks for joining us. Congratulations to the Lakeland Thunderbirds. They will play in the Resh on Friday. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in about...